Welcome back. Pharmaceutical companies are working to make testing for coronavirus more efficient. They are ramping up makeshift sites to get more people tested. Joining me right now over the telephone is CVS Health Executive Vice President, Chief Policy and External Affairs Officer Tom Moriarty. Great to see you, Tom. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us. So Mary. you were Thank at the you. White House meeting on Friday. Tell us what CVS is doing right now, what the next steps are in terms of uh, moving this forward. Well, Maria, Friday was an important uh, step forward. You know, as we've looked and the situations developed, we've been asking ourselves a simple question. How do we leverage our scale uh, and our unmatched capabilities uh, in the communities where we are? Uh, and how do we help our members, customers, and patients and be a real resource? So as we've looked at it, the presence we have uh, in the community, we're taking a number of steps. Uh, first, we're protecting access to medications uh, by waiving delivery fees and easing restrictions on filling prescriptions. Uh, we're making telemedicine more readily available by waiving fees and encouraging patients uh, to utilize the, this important benefit. Uh, and then, most importantly, we're working with the administration, uh, the governors, state and local officials, on increasing frequency and the efficiency of the COVID-19 testing. Uh, so these are all big steps, uh, and we're happy to play a part uh, for the country. So tell me about that testing and, and, and uh, how things have changed, let's say, in the last month, because obviously initially uh, we had a major issue with the testing where they didn't work. Uh, that, that's right, Maria. And uh, over the last week, the end of last week and over the weekend, um, uh, Roche and Thermo Fisher uh, had uh, new testing capabilities approved, uh, and what that's going to allow for uh, testing uh, to take place in secure areas of parking lots, importantly, not inside our stores. Uh, and the individuals being tested will not have to leave their cars. So uh, we're prepared to activate uh, the sites that we have. Uh, once FEMA and the other agencies provide testing supplies uh, and the other support testing protocols uh, are established. So we're in constant contact with the administration. Uh, with the governors as well as the, the local uh, and state health officials here. Tom, I, I imagine you're seeing a real increase in sales in, in, in some, some key products, over-the-counter products, certainly even prescription drugs. Are you seeing a significant amount of shortages given that the, much of the product comes from China? Uh, well, Marie, as you know, I mean, we're pretty much in every community across the country, so it does give us a unique view um, into what's happening. Uh, we have seen very large demand spikes across a wide range of uh, items and categories, and you'll know them, the face masks, the hand sanitizers, disinfectant sprays, and wipes and gloves. But we're in daily contact with our suppliers uh, and constantly restocking. And while there may be some spot outages, uh, we're pretty confident our ability to continue stocking our stores uh, for our patients and customers. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think you make a good point. I, th I went the other day to buy wipes, and there were no wipes, right? And then other people say, well, there are no masks. I can't find gloves. Y you, have a con you have a confidence that the suppliers will, will, will keep that train moving uh, as things get tougher in the coming weeks? Uh, we have that commitment, Maria. They're, they're ramping up uh, continued production. Uh, and adding shifts and, and really working hard uh, to meet the demand that is out there for all of these supplies. And, and given the demand that we're seeing, have you raised prices in any way? What, what should viewers understand and, and uh, patients understand when they're dealing with CVS? Because, you know, this is a moment in time where some companies will use this opportunity to actually see the demand and, 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 and hike prices. Well, Marie, I think we've demonstrated over the years that, that we do the right thing for our customers and patients. And so uh, in any uh, disaster or uh, emergency response situation, we have a protocol where we freeze our prices to where they were uh, before the emergency or the disaster happened. So you will not see that happening at CBS pharmacies. Uh, we'll continue uh, having those products available uh, for the patients and customers. Uh, that we're serving. And, and I know, as long as I know CVS, your leadership team has gotten ahead of the wellness tra trend as well, trying to encourage uh, employees not to smoke, to, to live healthy lives. Is, is this still one of your principles within the company? It absolutely is, Maria. I mean, we made the decision to stop selling tobacco products back in 2014 because we recognized uh, to become a true healthcare company, we had to align with the interests of the patients and customers we serve, uh, our response to the opioid epidemic, all the work we do in the communities each and every day, and even more recently, our commitment to public housing and, and making investments in housing, uh, because access to housing is a critical component of health care 
uh, as we go forward. Yeah, Tom, it's great to have you on the program this morning. Please stay in touch. Come back soon so you can give us an update on all of this. Very, very scary Thank time you very for much, people. Tom.